On the 24th of November, 1663, Otto von Rilke of lagenau Gramitz was invested at Linda with that portion of the estate of Linda left by his brother Christoph, who had fallen in battle in Hungary. He was, however, required to sign a deed of reversion according to which the investiture would be null and void in the event that his brother Christoph, who according to the death certificate presented had died as a cornet in the Imperial Austrian Cavalry Regiment, should return. Riding, riding, riding. Through the day, through the night, through the day. Riding, riding, riding. And the heart has become so tired and the longing so vast There are no longer any hills, hardly a tree. Nothing dares to rise up. Alien huts squat, thirsting beside muddy wells. Nowhere a tower, and always the same scene. One has two eyes too many. Only when it is dark do we sometimes think that we know the way. Are we doubling back every night over the ground we won with so much effort under the alien sun? Perhaps like back home in high summer. But it was summer when we said our farewells. For a long time, the women's dresses sparkled out of the green. I mean, we've been riding a long time now. So it must be autumn, at least there where sorrowful women know of us. Someone is talking about his mother, a German, apparently. Slowly and distinctly, he, he sets forth his words. Like a, like a girl arranging flowers who pensively tries one flower, then another, without knowing what kind of hole they will form. And so he places his words for joy, for sorrow, everyone listens, even the spitting stops, for they are all gentlemen who know what is proper? And anyone in the crowd who doesn't speak German suddenly understands it, feels particular words.
one evening when I was little now they are all intimately related these gentlemen who come from France, from Burgundy, from the Netherlands, from Carinthia's valleys, from the castles of Bohemia, and from the Emperor Leopold. For the story that this one tells they too have experienced and in just the same way as if there were only one mother. A day through the supply train, curses, colors, laughter, the countryside dazzles with them. Bright colored boys come running, scuffles and shouts. Wenches come with crimson hats over streaming hair. Beckoning, soldiers come, black armored as the wandering knight, grab the wenches so hotly that their dresses rip. Press them against the drum's edge. And from the wilder resistance of passionate hands, the drums awaken. As in a dream, they rumble, rumble. And in the evening, they hold out lanterns to him, strange ones, wine, sparkling in iron hoods. or blood. What is the difference? Von Langenau is writing a letter deep in thought. Slowly, he, he draws the large, solemn, upright characters. Dearest mother, be, be proud. I carry the flag. Don't worry, I carry the flag. Love me. I carry the flag. Then he puts the letter inside his tunic in the most secret place and, and thinks maybe someone will find it someday. And he thinks, for the foe is near. They ride over a slain peasant. His eyes are wide open and something is mirrored in them.
not the sky. Later, dogs howl. So a village is coming at last. And above the hut, stonily rises a castle. Wide, the bridge reaches toward them. Large, the gate looms up before them. High, the trumpet welcomes them. Listen. Rumbling, clattering, dogs barking, winning in the courtyard, hoofbeats, shouts. Rest. To be a guest for once. Not always to serve up your wishes with meager fare. Not always to grab at things as the enemy does. For once to let all just happen and to know whatever happens is good. Not always to be a soldier, for ones to let down your hair untied, leave your collar open wide, sit in a silken chair and feel the tips of your fingers, the pleasures of the bath. And to begin to learn what women are. How the white ones move and how the blue ones are. What kind of hands they have. How their laughter sings. When blonde boys bring lovely dishes heavy with juicy fruits. It began as a meal and became a feast, a festival. They hardly knew how. The high flames flared, voices buzzed, wild song tinkled from glitter and glass. And at last, from the mellow rhythms in the air, the dance arose, and it carried them all away. Such waves pounding through the room, such self-encounter, such self-acceptance, parting from her and finding her once again, savoring the glow, blinded by the glitter, lulled by the summer breezes that fill the dresses of warm women.
from the dark wine and the thousand roses, the blissful moment runs into the dream of night. Someone who is wearing white silk recognizes he, that he cannot wake up, for he is awake, bewildered by reality. And so he flees, terrified into the dream, and stands in the park, alone in the black park. And the festival is far off, and the light lies, and the night is near around him and cool, and he asks a woman who bends toward him, are you the knight? She smiles. And then he is ashamed of his white cloak. wishes he were far away and alone and in armor. In full armor. Our chamber is dark, but they light up each other's faces with their smiles. They grope their way toward one another like blind people and tumble into each other as into doors, almost like children terrified of the night. They cling to each other. Yet they are not afraid. There is nothing that could be against them. No yesterday, no tomorrow, for time has collapsed. And 
they thrive on its rubble. He does not ask your husband. She does not ask your name. For they have joined with each other to become a new union altogether. new names and will quietly remove them again as one removes an earring. Is that the morning? Which sun is rising? How large is the sun? Are those birds? Their voices are everywhere. All is bright, but it is not the day. All is loud, but it is not with bird song. Is the rafters that glow. Those are the windows that scream. And, and red, they scream into the foe who, who stand outside in the flickering land, scream, fire. And with tattered sleep in their faces, they all press forward half iron, half naked, from room to room, from wing to wing, and search for the stairs. And with troubled breath, the bugles in the courtyard stammer, to arms, to arms, and trembling drums. But the flag is not there. Shouting, cornet, raging horses, prayer, screaming, Cursing, cornet! Iron on iron, command and signal. Silence, cornet! And once again, cornet! And out thunders the cavalry. But the flag is not there. Through the blazing halls, he's running a race. Through the doors that greet him with fiery embrace. Down the stairways that rise up and sear his face, he bursts forth out of the raging building. In his arms, he carries the flag like a pale sleeping woman. And he finds a horse and is off like a cry. Over everything there, passing everyone by, even his comrades. And then the flag awakens. And never was she so royal. And now they can see her far to the front and see the shining, helmetless man and see the flag. But suddenly, she begins to glow, flings herself forward, is huge and red. The flag is on fire in the midst of the foe, and they gallop to save her. The next spring, it arrives sad and cold. A courier from 
the Baron von Pierovano rode slowly into Lagenau. There, he saw an old woman cry. Bravo to you. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, thank you. Let's go one more time.